welcome to a new episode of The Brand Called You. Today we have a very, very interesting young lady who was a professional and has now become an entrepreneur. Tamanna Gamija, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ashutosh, for having me here. Thank you. Tamanna is the co-founder and mommy-in-chief of Baby Destination. She is the president and founder of Doctors For You. She is from Delhi University. She is from the Copenhagen Business School. She's worked for AIG, DSP BlackRock, and General Matters, General Motors Asset Management. So Tamana, tell me a little bit about your early career before you became an entrepreneur. Sure. So I did my schooling all from Delhi. I was in a convent school mm -hmm. until 10th, mm -hmm. and then I did very well in my boards. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom put me in boarding school. Okay. And then the next two years, I didn't study at all. That's <laughs> good for you. <laughs> <laughs> And I did okay in my 12th. Mm -hmm. um, and then for my undergrad, uh, very few people know this, but I'd actually, um, I went to the US. I okay. went to New Jersey Institute of Technology. Okay. My brother was in the US. Yeah. So um, he felt I should do technology. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, mm -hmm. I went there. But then I dropped out. And very few people know this. Okay. And I came back. Okay. And I came back because my dad uh, was diagnosed with high blood pressure. Okay. And then I just thought that my brother's there mm. and if I'm going to be there, then, you know, I'll probably never come back. Mm. So I picked up the phone. I canceled my admission without telling anyone mm -hmm. and I came back. Mm -hmm. And then the next few months were very hard because I had nowhere to go, no mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to just not have anything to do. And then I uh, applied. My mom just said that there is a course there, bachelor's in information technology. Mm -hmm. It had some entrance exam. Mm -hmm. I applied and I went to Delhi University okay. for that. So I had a gap year. Okay. And post that, um, while I was in my fourth year, my dad told me that you should try and sit for CAT, mm -hmm. you know, because I wasn't hundred percent sure what sure. I want to do. And he said, just try sitting for those exams. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I studied for about two months mm -hmm. and got through okay. MDI. So okay. MDI is where I did my MBA. Okay. I majored in uh, finance mm -hmm. and marketing. Okay. And that's actually where I went to Copenhagen Business School for an exchange. Okay. And while there, I interned with a nanotechnology company called mm -hmm. Nano, mm -hmm. which was my first ever sort of internship. Mm -hmm. So I had a great stint Wonderful. there overall. Wonderful. And then in the financial companies, which are yes. BlackRock and... Yes. So after That's MDI, I, I joined uh, DSP Merrill Lynch. Mm -hmm. So it was my dream company. Okay. MDI was my dream institute okay. and DSP Merrill Lynch was my Fantastic. dream company for some reason. Fantastic. <laughs> so I was there for, uh, and I was doing financial sales. Mm -hmm. Well, later when I moved to the US is when I also did my CFA. So okay. I'm a CFA charter holder. Amazing. Yeah. So you're back to all your <laughs> exceptional ad academic qualifications. No, no. I don't think any of them is ex exceptional. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you the reality behind how each one happened. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so tell me, Tamana, you know, after uh, a corporate career, um, why did you choose to become an entrepreneur? So... You know, I, I wish I could say that I always knew I had to become mm. an entrepreneur. It wasn't a calling. Yeah, it. I don't know if it wasn't a calling mm. in the traditional sense, mm. but I think I've always been like that, okay. like what I wanted to do. Yeah. I've always worked towards it and done it. doesn't okay. matter if someone's done it before or not. My why should be clear, Okay. right? So um, at GM, um, General Motors mm. Asset mm. Management, where I was, after I moved to the US, I was there for about... The remainder of my career okay. which is nine years mm -hmm. uh, at GM I was in a quant analytics role initially okay. where I was basically building models mm -hmm. um, using MATLAB Excel etc for front office and GM manages about 100 billion in investments yeah. mm -hmm. um, after two years of doing that I I just knew it that I have to become a portfolio manager mm -hmm. I have to manage money mm -hmm. with like no masters in the US with just in the middle of just clearing one level of mm -hmm. CFA I was like, I have to do this. I don't know how, but this is what I need to do. Correct. So I don't know if that's entrepreneurial, but yeah. I did not think, is it possible? Like okay. GM, yeah. as American as they can get, you know, right, like, right, right. but uh, I did that. I interviewed mm. and then I, within three months, I became a portfolio manager. I was Amazing. managing like $200 million as a portfolio manager who's not ever been in investment operations, okay. who straight away jumped into mm. that. While I was a PM, I worked on my model myself, mm -hmm. right? So stayed up all nights. And that was like, 
I wanted to do it like no one else mm-hmm. has ever done it. So when I look back, I feel like, you know, maybe just that thing is there mm-hmm. and maybe that's entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. It's more the spirit rather okay. than the actual Fair act. I, uh, the idea of baby destination came to me when I became a mother mm-hmm. in 2014. Mm-hmm. And the biggest sort of realization was that the day your baby is born, mm-hmm. you're also born. Yep. And it doesn't matter how many kids you've seen growing Correct. up around you. It doesn't matter if you're in New York or if you're in the village. It's yeah. that same feeling. Something's come out of mm. you, which is like 19 inches yeah. tall. And, mm. and now figure out why they're crying. Right. right. Figure out why they wouldn't take a bottle. Yeah. And not just figure it out. Do it kick ass. Correct. Because everybody is there on Correct. you. Correct. So I just, then I questioned why. Like, why is that the case? Right. Um, and what I found out was that you know, it's, it's of course, the biggest life event that happens, Correct. right? Yep. Um, but then the other thing is that there's a lot of information available, mm-hmm. but there's not that much support available yep. or ways to figure out support. It's not like people don't want to support you, mm-hmm. but maybe there are not enough platforms available for peer support, mm-hmm. which is how the whole idea of Baby Destination started, yep. that let's solve this discovery journey for a mother. Mm-hmm. Agree. And Agree. it starts from information discovery, comes from you know doctors family but also peers you may not have the opportunity mm-hmm. to talk to 10 moms in person every single day Correct. But in this time and age there has to be a better way i mean mm-hmm. there's a reddit there's a core others yeah you know we can call so, it you, so you develop this as a community for community, where, yes. where mothers could interact with one another yes. so the idea was to build a dis- to solve for the discovery problem okay. that it shouldn't you shouldn't be as clueless as you are yeah. you should at least have those inputs and yeah. then you take your decision yeah. so the idea was to build a content driven community platform mm-hmm. and um, you know eventually solve for those information product and service related mm-hmm. queries when I looked, I was still in New York at that mm-hmm. time. And when I started talking to friends and family back home, mm-hmm. I realized the problem is even bigger in India. Yeah. Why? Because the access to doctors mm-hmm. and experts is very, very limited. Mm-hmm. Even if it is there in metro cities, there is no protocols Correct. around things. Correct. Right? Like Correct. you could give cow's milk to yeah. a one month old mm-hmm. baby. It's it's bizarre. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. right? So I felt like if we have to do it, we have to do it in India. Mm-hmm. And if we have to do it anytime, it has to be now. Because I strongly felt that data will become very cheap. Mm-hmm. So access to internet will become cheap. Correct. At that time, there was no yeah. geo. I yeah. was thinking all this in 2015. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So that's how... Yeah. So, you know, when our, when our children were born 35 years ago, the only uh, uh, ready reckoner used to be a Dr. Spock, mm-hmm. who, which, who had written a Bible on parenting, of, of bringing up small children. Yeah. But now there's so much and I'm so delighted you're doing amazing work. <laughs> so tell me, you know, uh, with such a large community of brands, do you have a lot of baby brands who are wanting to partner with you? Yeah, so brands happen much later, mm-hmm. right? And the idea was not, I, we didn't even know that we work with brands. Mm-hmm. We used to, to be honest, I didn't have 100% clarity into how we monetize. Mm-hmm. What I knew was we need to solve this problem. Like, let's do it somehow. Initially, I used to think we'll build an app and we'll build forums and communities yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And then within a few months, I realized that if somebody is spending time on their cell phone, especially mm-hmm. moms, it's either on Facebook or WhatsApp. Yeah. And then I realized the kind of dopamine that mm-hmm. effect that mm-hmm. it causes for all of us and the virality that's built in. And I was like, we have to build this on mm-hmm. Facebook mm-hmm. and WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. And everyone was like, are you crazy? Like, you've moved all the way back to, like, build Facebook groups and... I said, yeah, because that's where moms are. That's mm-hmm. where we can mm-hmm. add value. Mm-hmm. Cannot expect them to come here where they're already Correct. worried about their child. Correct. Right? Come here to get information. So we started building our communities mm-hmm. on Facebook and WhatsApp, which in itself was sort of unheard of. Mm-hmm. And uh, once we started building communities, we realized that these conversations are a gold mine of information Correct. for anyone that wants to mm-hmm. add value. Mm-hmm. So if there is a community or a group, I don't know, are you a part of any yep. Facebook groups? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you yeah, know, right? right? So like a startup Facebook group, mm-hmm. let's say. If you just go through those conversations, it doesn't matter who, if, even if you take all the personal, if it's just mm-hmm. like text, what you would be able to tell is what are the top five pain points? Mm-hmm. Funding or, sure. you know, just scaling, sure. Sure. whatever, sure. right? 
what you would be able to then deep dive and say that you know why is scaling such a big pain Correct. point right Correct. because the business models are yeah. so different there's mm-hmm. no cut copy paste everywhere yeah, and all that. right. that's the kind of information we started like we used to have basic excel spreadsheets mm-hmm. where we used to write that okay it's postpartum depression what are the trigger triggers into postpartum Correct. depression Correct. right and one insight was for example that not looking good mm-hmm. triggers yeah. it yeah. right extends yeah. it so we started a community on mom's beauty mm. right because at home if you can just look good it's mm. your own self confidence mm. true so this was like it was life changing mm. for me at least mm. right i've always dealt with data mm. you know in my life and finance i'm a very curious person but this was like wow all it needs it to have meaningful communities yeah. to no pain points and then to solve them Amazing. how are we solving yeah. them by doing content yeah. Yeah. right so 10 ways to not sort of go through postpartum mm. depression mm. and all that and then is as we started scaling because it was a feedback loop into mm. our community mm. growth mm. i was very curious on how brands talk to their tg right okay. especially moms because mm. all of us are them are trying to get our eyeballs mm. everywhere we go very whether true. it's a hoarding whether it's tv and then i was like why are they not trying to answer these questions mm. in an unbiased way mm. and it's okay to say i'm a brand and i do this but why is that not happening correct and to my surprise when i started speaking to them i realized that there's a lot of gaps mm. there's tremendous gaps in consumer research we do it very primitively like mm. we'll go do surveys we'll say we understand our consumers mm. you know this one mom said this let me just extrapolate yeah, absolutely that absolutely right and there is a tremendous gap in terms of roi tracking also I'll do an ad and I'll say, okay, it's reached one million people. Great, bingo. And then what happens? Was I able to solve the problem? You know, did the person come to next step? And that's what really said that you know this is a win-win because they need moms need information. Brands are, exist because there is a gap that they're solving. There's a value prop. If we were to do a Venn diagram, what is the intersection of those two? Let's solve that. And that's where we started. doing some you know sort of giving brands limited access to communities through their admins in a very contextual manner mm-hmm. running advocacy programs and we like i'm so proud when i feel that you know we pioneered those mm-hmm. fantastic so and this platform how, must be now what only in india or you begin to go to other countries as well so there's one part of our journey which is not captured on my linkedin mm-hmm. you know how they say mm-hmm. that's so uh while we were doing this yeah. Uh, our communities now are about 1.3 million moms, mm-hmm. and they are uh, pain point based. They are informational mm-hmm. communities, right? So baby care, breastfeeding, Hindi. They're across languages. They're across locations. Mm-hmm. While we did this, we realized how hard it is to grow, engage, mm-hmm. and monetize the communities, okay. right? Mm-hmm. It is extremely difficult. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's organic. Yeah. So I cannot go and run a Google ad mm-hmm. and get people to and then show a great metric. Hey, these are the number of members. They have to organically mm-hmm. join, mm-hmm. which means they should see my community somewhere in order to join. Correct. Which means there's a Facebook algorithm that shows it to them. So there was a lot of figuring out, mm-hmm. right? How how do we keep the engagement going so that growth happens? And then how do we monetize? Which Correct. means educating brands and all of that. I was fortunate enough that we got selected by Facebook as one of the top hundred global communities. Wow. It's the first time ever that Facebook has invested money in mm-hmm. communities. Mm-hmm. So we got some funding, got a lot of mentorship, and most importantly, got the opportunity to interact with ninety nine other top global communities from across the world. Amazing! At their Menlo Park offices, like twice we met there, and once we had a regional meet up. and that was eye opening mm-hmm. because what i realized is that these are not just problems that we had or other indian communities or mm-hmm. groups have mm-hmm. let's say a mom sitting here yeah right wherever in gurgaon in mumbai i've started a community mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. of us must be smart we get some yeah. sponsorships and some of us don't know what to do with yeah. it right but then i realized it's not just an india phenomena it's a global phenomena and that to me was like this needs to be done at a bigger level correct right that these are community mm-hmm. entrepreneurs mm-hmm. it was eye opening mm-hmm. there were no social entrepreneurs until few years back True. there were no startups when i like yeah. you know it was like yeah so these are community entrepreneurs mm-hmm. you know from what, that one person is the content manager you know is keeping the group clean mm-hmm. is doing everything mm-hmm. and putting all of so i was like let's scale this let's take this to the next level mm-hmm. we were already 
like we were super strong in analytics mm-hmm. of course and mm-hmm. we had tons of spreadsheets where we had automated things for ourselves so we said why not mm-hmm. 1000x this impact and we launched a platform called convosite okay which we launched last year mm-hmm. and it's globally the first platform for community admins to help them grow engage and monetize their communities wow. also mm-hmm. and uh, really the vision is to create tons of like if someone asks me what i i think whatever entrepreneur mm. i am i'm a community entrepreneur Correct. whether it's cool or not cool doesn't yeah, matter yeah, yeah. that's what it was right amazing that's so, quite amazing quite amazing <laughs> so that's how we were uh, so the one let's move to the next part which is the doctors for you yeah. you know you're a founder of this as well and tell me about this initiative so doctors for you um started in 2015 mm. So me and my husband Tarun, we always wanted to do something uh, for kids, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there was a trigger event in our life where mm-hmm. we felt that this is the area that we should focus on, mm-hmm. which is congenital heart diseases. So what we do at Doctors for You is we help children who are born with any sort of a heart Correct. disease, right? Uh, yeah. Congenital because mm-hmm. they are born with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, undergo treatment now okay. that treatment can be open heart surgery or just a non open heart intervention mm. which impacts two things mortality and morbidity okay. both okay. because quality is as important as the Correct. length of life right. this is a very high impact area because if the treatment is done within a certain time frame only then that impact mm. can happen mm. right so depending on the severity of the situation yeah. it has to be done in, in a few days or a few weeks or a few months mm-hmm. and if that one time intervention is that's it okay. it changes the life so yeah. it's not like lifelong medication mm-hmm. whatever in mm-hmm. most cases mm-hmm. so this again uh, before starting it we'd come to india we did a lot of we went to tier 2 cities mm-hmm. this was before baby mm-hmm. destination mm-hmm. and uh, you know we started it we are a 501c3 approved non profit mm-hmm. and also adg approved yeah and uh, you know till date we've helped about 325 children wow, undergo surgery yeah that's such an amazing thing yeah thank you so tell me uh, how do how do uh, parents of children who have this uh, challenge how do they reach out to you sure so when we started right one of the biggest again when we looked at data we saw that there are so many non profits mm-hmm. in india we didn't do it in us why because nobody gets denied medical treatment yeah. there even if you're homeless you'll get treatment yeah. So in India there's so many non-profits I think there are more non-profits than doctors mm, correct <laughs> so we shouldn't have this problem yeah. the, but the problem is transparency and how they operate so we said the referral has to be also 100% authenticated correct so we tied up with GB Pant hospital because you know if you go to their OPD which happens like on Fridays mm-hmm. you'll see hundreds of kids they come yeah. in the morning they sit out there and I have sat through mm-hmm. them and seen that how because of lack of 40000 rupees they'll turn around and go they Correct. just don't have the money yeah. right so we get referrals from gb pant we get referrals from medanta also mm-hmm. because sometimes patients come there mm-hmm. uh, a lot of open heart surgeries are uh, happening in medanta as Correct. well so it's basically doctor referred patients okay. and then they fill it out and like the idea was the whole process should be 100% transparent mm-hmm. right now having said that let's say you reached out mm-hmm. that you know whoever my domestic help or mm-hmm. someone has would you be able to help yes mm-hmm. we would still show them to the doctors at gb pant because the prognosis is very important correct correct if the chance is 2% mm-hmm. and the doctor says mm-hmm. so we leave that decision to the to doctor. doctor yes that's wonderful so tomorrow mm-hmm. let's move to a few questions for you personally you know um, you, know, you you had an amazing corporate career you building an amazing community you're doing so much work have there been any uh, people who've had a strong influence on you and if yes what have you learned from them so yeah i think my family and starting with my grandma i think she's the biggest influence on me she's mm-hmm. not around anymore but i think whoever i am like it's because of her um, and um, specifically i think you know compassion as we call it mm-hmm. it's really something that i have learned from her okay um i see her struggle and turn all adversities into advantages mm-hmm. just by doing things yeah. for others yeah. so that um 
So she's one. Uh, my mom mm-hmm. is a cancer survivor. Wow. She okay. actually got diagnosed the year that I wanted to move here, mm-hmm. 2015. Okay. Right. And then as soon as we found out, of course, help broke yeah. loose. And, and you came back because of your dad's blood pressure. That was initially, yeah. but now they are back in New York. So oh, now back my home family family is okay. in New York, okay. right? Okay. So when I was in New, I moved with them. I oh, missed this part, oh, I but I moved okay. to New York because I moved with them, okay. right? So she was in New York when this all happened, right. and then of course everything was put aside, and me and my dad were her primary mm. caretakers. And the day she graduated in US, they graduate mm. you from cancer treatment. Next week I was on a flight to India. Right. So, but like really, her resilience. She's the strongest human being ever. Mm-hmm. And her doctor, she got treated at Sloan Kettering, says that, you know, I want to, she used to go for chemotherapy with pearls. Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, I have to put you in a book mm-hmm. because it's the spirit. I know. So that's that. Know. And my dad, because I think he's the kindest human being, okay. you know, and uh, just the kind of compassion. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's so. wonderful. Amazing to have such good mentors, isn't there? Or something. Such yeah. people looking, looking after you. Exactly. You know? I think what you are professionally is a reflection of your values correct. personally. And correct. <laughs> correct. So my next question too would be that it would be that, you know, what would be three words that define Tamanna? Self-aware, mm-hmm. compassionate, mm-hmm. resilient. Okay. Which is how you're building such an amazing business. You know, and yeah, I mean, it's and you know what is amazing? I think amazing is the impact you see day in, day out. Correct. You know, self awareness is extremely important mm. because good and bad you need to know it day in, day out. Mm. Like, what is my animating force in life? Correct. If I know that, and I'm constantly working on making it better, mm. and amazing. yeah, so that's <laughs> amazing. So, if I was to ask you, you know, uh, you're building this community and you know, you so uh, easily said that I discovered this and I must do this and then I, you said that we must make it 1000x. What is the secret of all this uh, thinking or success? What goes behind uh, in your mind when you're thinking of all these things? So I think I'm very committed to the cause and people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm super invested in people. Mm-hmm. So when I say cause, when we were building Baby Destination, or we are building Baby Destination, mm-hmm. that cause is to help the mum get access to information. That's Correct. it, period. Correct. does not matter. It happens on an app. does not matter. It's in person, right? does not. What I do always bear in mind is that it should be something which is scalable. It mm-hmm. should not be dependent on one person. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not the face or influencer. Correct. Like, that's not. Because then it's restricted on yeah. me, yeah. right? So... When again started talking to brands, the cause was that help them maximize, you know, their impact and ROI, which is what they want, right? So channelize that. So I think that's, we're very, very obsessed. I don't know if that's the right word, with the cause, Mm. with whatever we are working. When it became Converside, it's like, let's change the landscape, right? Right. People should be talking about community entrepreneurs. Mm. They're doing so much work. Mm. Let's take this, you know, sort of purpose on. Mm. So I think that's one very, very big thing. And when I say being invested in people, end of the day, all of this is because we're doing something for people, right? Correct. And whether it's employees, whether it's, you know, people you look up to, mm-hmm. it's it's just, so all the decisions, that becomes a very important factor. Okay. And I would also say that resilience is, it's like never, never, never give up, mm-hmm. you know? So that just, I don't think we should be blindsided, but uh, that's yeah. super critical because just keep marching forward. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so my next question would be, you know, you're doing a startup. You said 2015 you started. Uh, 2016. 2016. 2015. I, yeah. The uh-huh. idea came. came 2016. To you. And uh, you're sitting in India and thousands and thousands of people are doing startups. Um, for someone listening to us talk now and there are thousands of people young people who are listening uh, like you will be listening. What advice would you have to a young individual wanting to start uh, their own business or enterprise? So the one thing that I would say is that, you know, know why you're starting up. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say, I have a fire in my belly. Mm -hmm. I just want to do something kick-ass no one's done. But just know that and accept it. It's Mm -hmm. okay. 
no one has it all figured out right but just that reason should be clear even if it is to build a build a whatever x million or billion dollar company mm-hmm. know that and put it down right be true to yourself do not lie to that part yeah. and i think if that is clear then you will see how the actions everything will align you know mm-hmm. this quote that when the intent is right the universe aligns to make things happen mm-hmm. that will happen but just know and just be true to that purpose yeah. i would just say and you know the one thing that i say what's on linkedin what's on resume is all great hmm. but there are things which are not on linkedin which is the real Correct. you right so Correct. just make sure it's aligned with what's your kick Correct. your purpose yeah. and your own value system yes yes wonderful yes. so my last question to you um, and this is on failure um i've often said that Indians or maybe South Asians or people of Asia don't teach children that it's okay to fail, and uh, that manifests itself in our behavior on roads, flight lands in India. Everyone wants to be out first, etc., etc. <laughs> and yet we all fail. Yeah. Right. So my question to you, Tamana, is that what have been some of your learnings from maybe some mistakes or failures? So. uh um, i have a son who's now going to be 6 in 2 mm-hmm. weeks right and uh he is not so he's you know very good with whatever things mm-hmm. he does i feel intellectually maybe he's good i just feel he's smart but he's not extremely like he's little small like me because mm-hmm. the doctor calls me small mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so he may not run the fastest yep. for example right and uh, i tell him that mm-hmm. it's okay it's fine yeah we are always competing against ourselves okay. and i specifically talk about one failure which is not traditional yeah. like a startup yeah. failure but i stood last in a race in school once i never ran again mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. so when i say never it means that you know once we went to a tiger farm in bangkok and there was a bull who got after i know this is mm-hmm. hilarious mm-hmm. me and my husband yeah. were there mm-hmm. my husband ran in one direction <laughs> I think I would have not survived. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking while trying to run that mm-hmm. what will happen if I get hit and killed by the bull? Mm-hmm. People will laugh. She went to see the tiger, and this is what happened. I couldn't run. So wow. just because two things: one is I felt I will never be able to run fast mm-hmm. or work hard to get to that speed. Second is I thought I look so funny when I run because I run so slow. Mm-hmm. Last year at that FCLP program, one of the community uh, which is from Germany, mm-hmm. it's called this Mum Runs. The founder she just spoke to me. She said we're looking for thirty people, mm-hmm. and we want to enroll them in a running program. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started running last year. Okay. I can now run up to thirty minutes. Wow. Right. Not mm-hmm. with anyone. Yeah, not yeah, posted but, any for uh, my own. It's a huge correct. thing, and I tell it to everyone. Oh, a, I feel it. so good. Yeah. Right. So. I just feel, you know, failure. How do you define failure? I mean, is not raising funds a failure? I don't think so because it teaches you to sell better. Yeah. People looking down upon you is that failure, right? People saying that, what are you doing? Like, are you mm-hmm. this? Are you a Facebook group? Are you like, yeah. you know, how are you monetizing? Whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's it's failure is all in your yeah. mind, yeah. but uh, it is a stepping stone to success because that's, it teaches you how to circumvent amazing. that situation and problem solve mm-hmm. better. It's really well said. Very, very well said. So, Tamana, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I wish you lots and lots of success. And talking to you has been an incredible learning for me. <laughs> thank you so Good much, Ashutosh. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes, and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter. Facebook and Instagram simply search for the brand called you thank you and see you next week